This video is going to cover basic drawing with shapes in Flash. The first thing I want to talk about are the two different drawing modes. There is Merge Drawing Mode and there is Object Drawing Mode. So to demonstrate this I'm going to select the Rectangle tool here. And I want to point out that there's a circle down here that when you highlight, uh, hover over it, it says Object Drawing. It is not selected. Okay, And by default it shouldn't be selected unless you've changed it. Okay, So I am going to draw a rectangle with that unselected. This is drawn in Merge Drawing Mode. Okay, Now I'm going to draw another one with this selected. This is done in Object Drawing Mode. Now they look very similar. The difference is, is how the shape is saved here on the um, stage and how you're able to select it and interact with it. The one that is done in merge drawing mode here is actually five separate pieces. You can select the fill and move it. You can select an edge and move it. You can select an edge and move it. So each edge is its own piece. And I'll talk a little bit more about selection with merge drawing a little bit later, but I wanted you to see that how everything is a different piece. However, this one was done in object drawing, and I can't just select the fill or the edges. I can't do that. Okay. There's one other piece about this that's different. I'm going to select these and delete them. I'm going to do this one with oval tool. So if you hit the rectangle tool and hold down, you can select oval. Ooh, what's going on? Sorry, my screen went crazy for a minute. Okay, so I'm going to show you the other aspect of merge drawing mode and object drawing mode that is different. So I am going to unselect this so that I'm drawing ovals in merge drawing mode. I'm going to draw a green one. Okay, and now I'm going to draw a blue one right on top of it. Well, that was not blue, bluish. Let's delete. I just undid that. Okay, so now I am going to select object drawing mode and I'm going to do a green one and then a blue one. Oopsie. Now I'm going to draw a blue one. Okay, so here in each case I have a green and a blue oval that are overlapping. So these were done in merge drawing mode and these were done in object drawing mode. So notice that if you were to select this oval and select its outline by pressing shift and selecting the other piece, notice it doesn't want to select this one little piece right here where it overlapped. So to get that I'm going to have to press shift again. Notice what it did was cut this oval. Okay. And in fact, it's given me all these different pieces. I have this piece, I have this piece, that piece, oopsie, this piece. Okay, and actually, since I did this as an overlap right here, that's going to cut that. So essentially, wherever I put this, when I unselect it, when I pull it back, it's going to cut whatever it overlapped. So put it there, unselect it, now it's cut that. Okay, and I can do it here. If I don't unselect it, it won't do it, but if I unselect it and then move it, it will cut it. Okay, so this is kind of cool um, because it allows you to make neat um, drawings by just doing overlapping shapes. So this was merge drawing mode where wherever it overlapped, it cut it. Okay, however, these were done in object drawing mode and they did not do that. Okay. So that's the big difference between merge drawing mode and object drawing mode. And it's important to always know what mode you're in. If you definitely want to have two ovals that don't cut each other, you need to make sure you have the object drawing mode selected. That's this right here. And if you do want it to cut each other um, and merge together, then you're going to select merge drawing mode. So I want to go in more detail on how to draw with rectangles and ovals. Okay, so I'm going to highlight everything and delete it. 
So the first thing I want to do is go back to the rectangle tool by selecting this and then selecting um, rectangle. So you can select that, draw a rectangle by just, you know, dragging, okay, clicking and dragging will draw a rectangle. And notice that these here have your fill and your stroke, okay. So let's make it like purple. And you can change the stroke width here, okay. Boop. You can change it. Notice it only changes it on the last one you drew. Okay, you can also do it here. So you can do it in these two places. And if you wanted to draw a perfect square, you would have to hold down the shift key. So hold down shift as you drag and you have a perfect square. And then you can go and change all the pieces you want. You can also change its position. So if you wanted it at 0, 0, that'll put it right up there in the corner. You can change its width from here. And um, here when I change the width, it also changed the height because this was locked. If you want it to change um, where it doesn't scale proportionally, you could do that. You have to unlock it, so now this one will change and the other one won't. But if you want them to scale proportionally, you lock it, and then you can change this to like, well, I don't want to change it to that big, 50, and it scales it proportionally. Okay. Now, you can do s similar stuff. Let me control A, delete all this, okay. You can do similar stuff with ovals, and I'm going to put it in merge drawing mode, okay. So you just drag, click and drag. Now notice my stroke is not changing, okay, even though that was the last thing I selected. The only time it will change your stroke and your fill on the last thing that you selected is when you were in object drawing mode. So here we go. Let's do this. And now look, I can change my stroke and my fill all I want. And that's because this was the last thing I drew and I drew it in object drawing mode. If the last thing you drew was in merge drawing mode, it will not allow you to change these like this. Okay. So let's say I wanted to draw in merge drawing mode and I wanted to draw a oval with a black outline and a pink fill. I would have to select that first. Whoops. So now I'm in merge drawing mode and I can draw that. Notice that this one changed because this one was in object drawing mode and so whatever your last thing that you select, uh, whatever the last thing you drew in object drawing mode will um, will change. Okay. Also notice that when you select it in the properties up here, this was done in merge drawing mode. Notice it says shape. This was done in object drawing mode. And when you select it, it says drawing object. So that's one way to tell the difference between them. So here, see? Also, it's pretty easy because, you know, this one, it selects it. It puts this uh, rectangle around it when you select it, where this... Um, these that are done in merge drawing mode. It does not do that. Okay. Now if you wanted to make a perfect circle, you would do it similarly to the way that you would um, draw a square. You would shift, you would hit um, shift as you drag. So you can also hit it after you've already started dragging. So here I'm going to hit shift and it makes a circle for me. Shift makes a circle. I prefer just to hold it down while I start dragging so then it's always a circle. Okay. So notice this one was object drawing mode. It didn't cut this. These two didn't cut, but this one did get cut from it. See how it's different pieces now? Okay. There's one last thing about rectangles and ovals that I want to talk about, and that is the rectangle primitive tool and the oval primitive tool. So if you select where your rectangle and oval tools are and then go down to rectangle primitive tool, it allows you to draw a rectangle that doesn't look too special. It looks pretty much like what you were getting with the rectangle, um, rectangle tool. However, what this allows you to do is essentially curve the edges. Okay, so if you see this down here, 
you can move this slider and if you move it to the right it makes it more round and if you move it to the left it pulls it in okay if you hit reset it'll bring it back to a square now right now as I move these it's doing it every piece the same but if you click this it'll allow you to move each of these individual ones so now you can't move this now but you can type in numbers you can also press the up key and then once you press the up key if you press enter or click out it'll go ahead and do it so if I wanted to do this one that much I can also press the down key and that'll make it go in down key make it go in Okay. Now the oval primitive tool allows you to draw portions of circles as well as donuts. Okay. So if you select here and go down to oval primitive tool, click and drag. Okay. And I'll just make a very circular-ish one. What I can do is move the start angle and watch what happens. You get like a little Pac-Man thing. Okay or you can change the end angle. Okay. I prefer to do the start angle because um, the end angle kind of makes it pop weird. Okay. You can also add an inner radius so that makes it very donut like and you can do a combination of any of these. So you don't have to do um, a lot of people when they want to make like something like an oval or something like that, they'll use all the um, they'll use the oval tool and then they'll put it in merge and like cut pieces out of it. But you don't have to do that. You can just use the oval primitive tool. The last option for shapes is the polystar tool. You can find that at the bottom here. Now, when you draw without doing anything, it should probably give you a pentagon. But if you want something different, you can hit Option, and notice that it has Style, so Polygon, or Star. Okay, So you can pick a um, Polygon, and let's say you want an Octagon, you select 8, and there you go. Or let's say you want a Star, oops, sorry I was already there. You select Star, and you want it to have 5 sides, so you just press Enter, or you could press OK. And now you have a star. Okay. Now um, you can also change the star point. So let's um, leave everything the same. Let's change this to um, one so you can see the difference. Notice it's not as pointy. Okay. So um, you can do all sorts of different things with, I don't know why I keep clicking that, you only need to select this. You can do so, or so, all sorts of different things with this by doing um, the polystar, polystar tool. Notice that the polystar tool also has the ability to do it in object drawing mode or in um, merge mode. So these I did, yes, I did them in merge mode. You can tell it's merge mode because you can select all the individual pieces. Okay. The last drawing tool I want to talk about is the line tool, and that's right here. And it essentially just lets you draw a line. It also has the ability to draw in object drawing mode or merge mode. And remember, if you have it in merge mode, when you start moving the stroke and fill, well, no fill in this case, when you start moving the stroke, it won't change it. But um, if you do an object, it'll change the last one. Okay. So I want to talk about different selections. And I am going to pause it and probably open up the screen with um, new images real quick so that I can show you that. OK, so I've drawn a few shapes and lines on the, uh, on the stage here. And I made sure that I did them all in merge drawing mode. So that means when I was doing drawing, this was not selected. Okay, so notice it's not selected. So there are a few different ways to select the various elements. And I've shown you how whenever it's in merge drawing mode, you can select individual pieces like this. But if you want to select more than one, you can hold down shift. And that will allow, allow you to select a few different things. 
Okay. Also, if you select fills, you can select a few different fills. You can select lines. Okay. If you, um, and that's all by just holding down shift for each um, one that you want. If you have a square or rectangle or something like this and you want to select all of its edges, you can just double click and it'll select all of them. Now notice with this one it didn't work and that's because it only selected all the lines that are connected. Okay, So this one doesn't have any lines connected to it, but this one does so it selects all the connected lines. Okay. Also if you want to select this entire piece, when you just select the first piece it won't select the fill, but if you double click it it'll select everything. Okay, So if you want multiple things you just hold down shift and if you want all of the strokes that are connected you double click. Okay. There's one other thing you can do if you just say you want this little corner here you can just drag and drop well not drag and drop click and drag and it'll only select this piece and I can pull it off if you want. Hmm. Let's see you can also do that with the lines. Okay, I can just select this piece here and move it all out. So there's lots of different things you can do with selection, but this is only true in merge drawing mode. When object drawing mode is selected, each thing moves as its own individual piece. Now that I've shown you the different selection techniques, I'm going to show you how you can use those to help you change the stroke and fill. So let's say you like that you have this rectangle, I guess it's kind of square, the square here. And, but you want it to have a blue outline okay, or a blue stroke. You can select the whole thing like this and you can actually just change the stroke like that. I said blue didn't I? Okay, so let's change it to blue. Okay. You can also select the fill, change the fill. Okay. Also if you want to select this piece right here, this fill, and you want it to be the same color as this one, you can use the eyedropper tool. Okay. You can also use the paint bucket and the eyedropper tool. Okay. So the let me unselect everything. The paint bucket tool allows you to change the colors of fills. So I want to do yellow. I can change all these fills with this. Notice it does not work on strokes. And the eyedrop uh, the ink bottle tool allows you to change strokes. Okay, so I can change it to whatever color I want. And you can do it in different ways, you know, like if you want to do this, you can change that to blue and it only selects that one piece and changes it to blue. You can also change the fill to purple and it only change the piece that you selected. So there's a lot of different options for changing the stroke and fill. I almost forgot to mention that you can also change the style of these um, these strokes by you know either selecting them. So you can change the thickness by moving this up and down. But you can also change the style, like to dashed or jagged or stippled. Okay. You can also do it with the ink bottle tool. You select the ink bottle tool. Select. Um, let's say I want to use this blue. Okay. Oh, don't want to make it that big. Um, let's make it hatched. And then I can just select the ones that I want. Okay. There you go. So there's a lot of different things you can do with just these few basic shapes. I recommend just playing around with the ink bottle tool, the eyedropper, the fill bucket, and um, the different shapes and just seeing what you can do. Turning merge drawing off, turning object drawing on, um, you know, just trying the different things and seeing what you can do. Uh, the more you do it, the more intuitive it will become. It is a little different than the other Adobe drawing software uh, softwares, but um, you know, it's once you get used to it, it's not too bad.